Welcome back to the second part of icons. There are a bunch of icon sets out there. I mean, I couldn't even name them all if I tried, but another option that we do have is that we can actually design our very own icon. I know that sounds pretty scary, but I promise it isn't. I mean, it is time consuming, but if you do have the time, go for it. So icons are pretty crucial to a design system. And before we even build, we need to really take into account a couple of things. First is size. So if we think about base units, that has to come into play again. And your icon should be designed based off of it. Our base unit is eight pixels. So let's create a grid. So we're gonna create a frame and it's gonna be a small frame. It's gonna be only 24 by 24 pixels. Let's zoom right in. There we go. Let's rename that to icon. So we have our little grid right here. And what we can do is we can create a layout grid, or not a layout grid, but we're gonna create an actual grid. So you'll notice that this is a defaulted 10 pixel grid. So it'll have 10 pixels by 10 pixels. We want an actual, just a one pixel grid. So that's gonna work for us. Perfect. So another thing is when we're creating an icon, we want to only use one color. Anything more than that, that's just a bit too much for product use. So I would just stick with one color at uh, all times, unless it's something like a marketing website where your icons are a little bit more blown up, a little bit more larger, like uh, 40 pixels or something like that. That's fine if you want to really use more colors to reinforce your brand. But for typical like product interface use and stuff like that, stick to one color. Now that we have our pixel grid, this makes it much easier. So we can stick to it. Our icons will render much more nicely if we stick onto these pixel lines here on, and onto our grid. So the first icon we're gonna make is just a simple check mark. And what we can do is we can just press P for our pen tool. And we can just stick to our grid like this, click it. And if we hold shift, we can stick to a certain angle. So if you're on a 45 degree angle, we could just do that and do something like that. And there you go. I mean, like it doesn't have to be hard. This looks a little too rigid, but if I select these points, so if I lose this and I click it again, if I double click it, I can select this point. If I hold shift, I can select that point. Then I can go over here to our vector, little toolbar, and I can just change that will change it if it's an actual outline. If it's an actual stroke, you can go here and I'll show you both scenarios. So you can round those corners, but if I didn't do that and I did something like this, increase the stroke, and then I did something like this where we're gonna click out of that and I can outline a stroke, then you can go over here and you can outline the edges. So what we can do here is we can start moving it any which way we want. That looks fine. We can also just leave it. We can bring this in a bit more, which is much better. And we're gonna center that. So this is one icon that we've just easily made. I'm going to just pump up the stroke on that because it's going to be harder to see. And I'm going to, like I said before, I'm gonna go and adjust the caps to make them round. And you can also adjust there to make it a little bit more rounder. There you go, we have an actual check icon. And you can duplicate that and you can actually make a variation of it. You can make this a little bit smaller if you want. Let's copy that and then Put that there and you can actually go ahead and make like a circle and make another variation of it. So it's sitting on those lines, send that to the back. And this is what I'm gonna do here. I'm going to make this black and I'm going to make this white. And this is great if you want to kind of create another variation of an icon that we just created. Some people like to create like circle based uh, icon sets or uh, just having a circle variation of like a check mark for other applications. Another easy icon that we can make 
is something like a cloud. So if I select our ellipsis tool up here, or if I select O for the shortcut, I can just create a quick cloud like this. I'm going to bring down the middle and this one's gonna be much bigger. There we go. And if I double click this, I can take this point and bring it down here. That doesn't really look like much of a cloud, but if I select that and I delete it, there we go, we have our cloud. I'm gonna select all these shapes and combine them, and then to press E to flatten that layer. We can also take our arrow tool and we can draw an arrow like it's an actual download icon. Let's uh, adjust that cap again to round. And we were using two pixels, so let's try and say uh, consistent. Yeah, that's not gonna work there. So we're gonna stick to, uh, to one pixel on this one. And we should probably stick to one pixel on this one too, if we're gonna create like an actual set. It's gonna be a little hard to see, that's the only issue. But there are different ways you can get around that. So there we go. And if I wanted to create like an actual see-through icon, so like right now, this is not see-through. If you take it off the canvas, it's still white and it's not one actual shape. So I'm gonna create outlines. So I'm gonna right click on that, create out, outline that stroke. Perfect. And I'm gonna select them and I'm gonna go back up here and I'm gonna click subtract. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna subtract this shape from this shape. And now it's one shape. All we need to do you'll notice that you'll still be able to see them here and you'll still be able to move them around. Now, if we don't want that ever to happen, we could just flatten that right here. So all we need to do is right click that and uh, press flatten or command E. And there you go. You have a cloud icon. Let's create a couple more. This is probably like you can create a location service icon they're really much more easier than you think. So if I'm just gonna do that, I'm gonna double click and I'm gonna hold shift. So before I click this, I'm gonna double click in here. I'm gonna click that, hold shift and pull upward. And just like that, we have our very own location icon. And it's pretty easy to make. We can do that even for a map pin, we can do some pretty cool tricks. Not everything is as complicated as it looks. So let's uh, just create a little circle here. We'll create another larger circle. So this is gonna be our inside. Let's bring that to the front. Select them both and bring that here. Great, we're gonna double click into that back layer and we're gonna grab this point and bring it down. Then we're gonna bring this down, select there, and we can use our grid. Let's press Control G, let's zoom in. We can use our grid to say that I want it on this point. So I know that when I do this, I'm gonna bring it on that point too. Now that's not really nice at the bottom, it kind of curves down. What we can do is Command, it'll bring both of those points in. And from there, you can round it by clicking up there, see? Just click that point, go up here, press one or whatever number you desire and there you go, you have your map pin. Like I said before, what you can do is you can subtract that and then pressing Command E to flatten it and you have your very own map pin icon. Okay, last one, let's create a heart. This one's really fun. So I'm gonna actually select my line tool. Hearts are really hard to make. I mean, I even have a hard time drawing hearts to this day for some sort of reason. I have a hard time even making them in here, but this is a little cheat code that I often use. Let me actually uh, press my pen tool. Let's go like this, boom, hold shift, hold shift. So we have two lines at 45 degree angles and that's it. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna select each end we're gonna go into our stroke settings and our advanced stroke settings. 
and we're going to press round and we're going to bump that right up. And there you go. You kind of have your own heart. You can't really see it right now. If we bring this in a little bit more, we can start playing with it. That looks really good. If I hold command and click on this, we can start creating a really nice round heart. And that is great. We can also just kind of manipulate that just a bit if we want to. Now what I'd like to do here is just kind of outline that stroke. You see there's a weird outline and sometimes that will happen with icons. That's totally fine. I'll show you how to fix that. There we go. What we're gonna do is we're gonna double click into here. So we have these weird things happening and that's even much more weirder, but we're gonna fix that. So we're just gonna drag this right to the bottom. We're gonna click on this and you can delete these. So be careful, sometimes it will actually delete the whole fill. But if you just Command Z out of that, that'll be totally fine. And if I press one, like I said before, there you go, you have your nice heart. Just make sure that you don't do that to kind of these little nooks because it doesn't really look that good. So that's it. I mean, you can easily make quick icons for whatever application you want. I mean, you can create them for your own navigation for habitual, whatever navigation you choose and whatever navigation you think is right. Maybe try actually making icons for that because it's not that hard. And sometimes you don't necessarily need a whole icon set for a product, but you will be using probably a good steady like 10 consistently, whether those are chevrons, which are really easy to make. I mean, we can even make one right now. Chevrons are those little arrows that are pointing left, right, and um, up and down. So, I mean, we can easily create our own chevrons. Just like that, it's totally easy. So take some time, try to find that consistency within the grid. If you're using like line widths of like two pixels, stick with two pixels. Don't have something that is like really thick and then something really thin. So if like you're using something like three pixel uh, lengths, stick with that. Be very consistent within your iconography, but take some time, have some fun. I mean, you can create your own little style here if you really have that time to do it. There you go. You have your very own custom icons and there are so many other things we can do when we're drawing within Figma, but that's a deep rabbit hole that we're not gonna really go down right now. Remember, have fun, don't take it too seriously. Choose some icons that you wanna do for our app. Jump right in there and just do it.